book one chapter twenty four of short history of the christian church by john fletcher hurst this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter twenty four ecclesiastical discipline careful training was early observed in the spiritual life of the church no sooner was a society organized than the closest attention was paid to the religious instruction of the young the converts of Pentecost were immediately received into the fellowship of believers, but the work was only just begun. There must be edification. Each believer was regarded as a temple, not finished, but susceptible of all beautiful and symmetrical forms. He must be built up. Hence, full provision was made for instruction and training. Paul's epistles abound in intimations that constant attention was paid to the domestic training for Christian life and for careful instruction in biblical knowledge. The new adult convert had everything to learn. He had just come in from paganism. No miracle could compensate for the previous absence of religious truth. When one embraced the new faith, or, as the phrase of the time went, laid off the toga for the pallium, he was a blank. The catechumens were required to pass through a severe discipline. There was no fixed time for terminating the catechumenate. While the apostles baptized immediately on profession of faith, the patristic church moved more slowly, for experience taught them that nothing was lost by a longer process before full membership. There were three classes of catechumens, the hearers, the kneelers, and the petitioners. The hearers would come to the general service, and hear the sermon and the lessons, but could not remain for prayers. The kneelers could also hear the prayers, and even the prayer of the imposition of hands. The petitioners could hear the entire service, and petition for baptism at the next public appointing, which was usually Easter Sunday. When the petition was accepted, the names of the candidate and his sponsors were recorded in the diptych or register then came a close examination or scrutiny which lasted twenty days when public baptism and reception took place the new member was admitted to the eucharist after the period of persecution had closed the time for the duration of the catechumenate became briefer than before the apostolical constitutions favored three years the Synod of Elvira laid down two, but the Synod of Agde shortened the time to eight months. The apostates were the more difficult class to manage. The temptations to apostasy were numerous. In some regions, the process of restoration continued for years. In others, when penitents were ready to suffer martyrdom, the ordeal was brief. In the African church, many apostates secured letters of peace from men just before suffering martyrdom, and with these as authority, they boldly demanded admission again into the church. One man, Lucian, boldly declared that he had granted peace to all apostates in North Africa, and had declared their sins absolved. And Cyprian, in a gentle mood, cried aloud that the church must keep peace with its martyrs. There were two classes of sins, the venial and the mortal, but martyrdom was regarded as the completion of any penitential experience. In the latter part of the third century, the penitents were more largely classified, mourners, hearers, kneelers, and bystanders. A bystander was the most advanced. He could advance up the nave of the church, join in all the prayers of the church, and witness the celebration of the Lord's Supper, but not participate in it. During all the stages towards restoration, the penitent must give practical proof of sincerity by abstaining from all diversions, by observing all the public fasts, by giving liberally towards the support of the poor, and by assisting in burying the dead. Restoration was completed by admitting the penitent to the Lord's Supper, by the prayer of absolution and reconciliation, and by the imposition of hands by the bishop. The penitential presbyter was the special officer who supervised the penitents during all the stages of restoration. It was his duty to see that all requirements were met, that the bishop was duly notified of the progress made by the penitent, 
and that the time was fixed for final restoration but his chief duty was to hear under oath of secrecy the private confession of penitence he also laid upon them the necessary penances but this officer though a forerunner of the priestly confessor was appointed simply for convenience in the service of church discipline the confessional as a prerequisite for communion in the case of all christians came in several centuries afterwards the office of the penitential presbyter was abolished a d three ninety on account of a scandal occasioned by a deacon the facts of which were revealed in the confession of a prominent woman of constantinople End of chapter 24